Tony from CassetteComeback.com Now in today's video I'm going to be looking at yet another rare and expensive cassette but it's a cassette that gives me a lot of hope for compact cassettes because of two words. What cassette is this? It's this, a National, i.e. Matsushita and Gron cassette. But I've seen this tape technology in other tapes. And what are these two words? It's these. Metal evaporated. What does that mean? And why is it so special? Let's have a little bit of a learning session. So what kind of cassettes am I talking about? Well, in this case, it's camcorder cassettes. Now, back in the early 90s, my pride and joy, well, it wasn't mine, I stole it from my dad, but I thought it was mine anyway, was my Sony TR-80 Hi8 camcorder. Now, when I was buying cassettes for this, I had basically two choices above length. I could buy MP cassettes or ME cassettes. And the difference is metal particle and metal evaporated. And the metal evaporated were thought to be better and they cost more. So what's the difference? Basically, metal evaporated tape, whose magnetic material is applied to the base film in a vacuum chamber. So if you think about how most cassettes have their actual magnetic pro property put onto the base substrate, it's usually like, on a, on like a big press where basically it's poured onto it and it's sort of baked onto it. But in this case, ME tape, was done in a vacuum chamber. This gives a much higher signal off the tape, but the coating is incredibly thin, around a quarter of a micron, and therefore much more susceptible to damage than metal particle tapes. Think of a car finish that is extremely thin and incredibly smooth, but not very durable. In situations where there's a lot of shuttling and editing, ME tapes could be problematic. A metal particle tape is much more durable. Think of a painted wall as opposed to a car finish, by a margin of 3 to 1 over metal evaporated tapes. So what it's saying is it's a different process that makes a much smoother tape but it's a much thinner coating. It performs better but it's not as tough. So that could be part of the reason why these ME tapes were a lot more expensive because it's a more expensive process and plus it's a specialized process that not everyone had. But here's the thing that gives me hope about ME tapes and it's this. Many high-end data tapes use the ME metal evaporated technology, VXA2, AIT2, AIT3 data, as well as several high-end Sony 8mm video cassettes, which we've just shown. The thing is, there are a lot of data tapes out there that are still being made, and they're based on metal evaporated technology. So, in theory, if we think about it, right, a superferric type 1 is a ferro-cobalt tape, that has the bias and EQ adjusted so that it works well at type 1 settings. Whereas stuff like an SA is a ferro-cobalt type 2 whose bias and EQ is so done so that it will work at type 2 settings. So technically, if they could, since they're still making lots and lots of data tapes, if they could tweak the formula, they already have the process for making it, they could tweak the formula and make metal evaporated tapes that would work at type 1, type 2, and type 4 bias. Indeed, Matsushita did this beforehand, because if we look here, this is a variant I'm looking at today. This is branded National. This is a type 1. But this Technics here is a type 2 metal evaporated. And this JVC is a type 2. Four metal evaporators. So basically, the same process, essentially the same tape, but with slight tweaks in formulation, so that they could be used at different microseconds and at different um, levels on decks. So if you think about it, it could give a bit of hope here because if they could do this, then and the only difference between these three tapes is how the tape formulation is done for the different bias types. And maybe, just maybe, they could do the same with all this data tape if there is enough demand, rather than trying to make all Type 2 and Type 4 again from scratch. But of course, this only works if the tape's any good. So let's find out. 
So there we go, back in the early 80s, Matsushita were making a tape technology, which is still in use now. They were making compact cassettes using this technology. Now, before I continue with this, I need to yet again give another shout out to a friend of mine. Yes, you all know him and love him. It's Dr. Bo. It's Mr. Joel Igbo. It's the man that runs Oxide Nation. Links to his eBay page is down below. Because again, completely selflessly, he sent me this, the one and only one of these cassettes I've ever had, completely free of charge. Because, well, what can I say? I guess videos are good cassettes that always explain stuff, can maybe bring more people in, which is good for everyone in the community. So he gives me cassettes like this, which are worth about 70 quid for free. So again, thank you very much, Joel. And like I say, if you're in America, North America, this is where you buy your tapes. You don't buy them from him if you're in Europe, though. You buy from me. Understand? Good. Right. So since this is the only one of these I've got, I'm doing this a little bit more carefully because I actually do want to keep this wrapper as intact as I can. So let's have a see if I can do this sweetly enough because yeah this is a very rare very expensive cassette and I just don't want to butcher this wrapper there we go oh it's painful no it's not going to do it for me it's too thick it's been there too long never mind one way or another we've got most of it so let's have a look at this cassette now, on the face of it, let's just put it out right there. This does not scream premium. Seriously, I mean, the hubs are unique. They're pretty unique hubs, them. But the actual tape itself, you know, it's a screw clear shell. It's a bit rattly. Nothing really exceptional there. Um, you know, the sticker's nice enough. It's a... A steely sticker what else do we get we get we get some very plain and boring looking stickers for it let's have a look at the old j card well if you're japanese you can probably make a lot from that but uh, not from me so because these were the metal evaporated tape and they use this process which was also being used for like I say at that time maybe camcorder tapes professional videotapes these cost more and because they cost more and let's be honest a lot of us won't have understood why they didn't really sell all that great so these weren't around for a long time they were very expensive and I don't believe that a lot of money was made by Matsushita on these and uh, you know something it really annoys me how my brain works because one day I will try and remember to bring a big so let's have a look at the tape itself so yes this 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 doesn't look very brown this is very dark gray but it's it's very smooth very shiny so yeah so I'll tell you what we'll do now now we've had a look at the tape Let's uh, bung it into the dragon, see what it can do with it. Because there's a couple of things I want to try. One is uh, just like record on it, but I'm going to see metal evaporated, three different types of tape based on this technology. I wonder how this type one biased one would perform at different levels if the deck could actually calibrate it up, i.e. could this perform as a Type 2 and could it perform as a Type 4? Who knows? Let's find out. Okay, so I just said that I was going to try recording this just out of curiosity as a Type 2 and a Type 4. I'm not going to subject you to the video of me doing that. Basically the Type 2 nearly got there, couldn't quite reduce the bias signal enough to make it crystal clear, but it was passable trying to run it at a type 2 at 70 microseconds type 4 nah couldn't get anywhere near biasing it up so we're just going to have now the national angron metal evaporated type 1 run as a type 1 so i've already biased the dragon up 
this track is from the YouTube Royalty Free Library again and it's called Airline. Let's have a listen to how this bad boy sounds. from the super ferret level. Okay, so there's two sides to this story. On the one side, this could take a lot of signal, and it was very clear, and it didn't distort, so that's a good thing. This performed like a good super ferric. But the flip side of that is, you can't have helped but notice that this tape is dropout city. Lots of dropouts there affecting it. He was taking the signal but there was lots of dropout and like I said the tape doesn't in any way shape or form look damaged to me. This is a very smooth and lovely tape but who knows this tape is over 35 years old you don't know what the storage conditions have been for this. So I guess the whole point of this video is not about saying go out and buy yourself some 70 pound metal evaporated tapes which could well be covered in dropouts like this one um, it's more about saying this metal evaporated technology when used within a suitable time frame and as long as the tape has been stored properly could potentially be the new source of high quality cassettes going forward because they are still making metal evaporated tape and if someone has the desire change the formulation a bit so the biases and levels, and I wouldn't care if this could, you know, if they, all they could make is type one metal evaporated, that was running at plus seven and not distorting at all, and it sounded great, except for the dropouts. So this is a cassette more, there's maybe a beacon of hope, as opposed to something that you need to rush out and buy right now. Because like I say, I can't say this is the same for all of them. I mean, you saw me opening brand new. This is, you know, the, this metal foil's decaying a bit there. If we look at the J card up here, we can see there's like little signs of mold. This this could just purely be a storage issue. But um, yeah, like I say, these could be the tape of the future if someone decides that they uh, they are interested enough in making cassettes again. So the conclusion I guess we have to come to here is uh, look after your tapes, enjoy what you've got. But you never know, you just never know. Speaking of which, I just want to say while I'm here, have you seen this? Bing! Yes, a Kickstarter for a personal cassette deck that's got Bluetooth 5 in it that right now will cost you $75. He's most likely using the Tanishin mech, which is in all them Crosley and cheap, you know, Walmart boom boxes and players and yet it's mono and people have helped them smash their goal in one day basically people are willing to pay 75 pound for a piece of crap like that so that 
metal evaporated tapes there could be a future the market might well be there so uh, yeah you just never know and before I go just another little thing here if you're actually curious to see what the man behind the voice looks like one of my previous uh, enterprises in inverted commas was I used to design and make watches and I got interviewed by a very well respected uh, watch brand owner on this video here Bing where I talk about the success and failure of my watch brand so if you fancy seeing what I actually look like and once you've seen the video you'll understand why I stay behind the camera you can do so there the other thing I'd like to uh, advertise so to speak is this Bing yes I used to do a radio show and then for some reasons I had to give it up but now I'm going to be back soon so from Sunday the 14th of July 12 till 2 on UK time and broadcast all over the internet so you can get the apps for the station or you can just log in straight on the websites you're going to get the Retro Nouveau which is my show where I mix a collection of classic tunes and cutting edge brand new tunes so you never know listen in there's more good music out there than there ever has been at any other time in history as far as I'm concerned and I'm going to show you some of them so if you want to listen in do so hey you can even tweet me and text me and I might play you a request so okay for now please like and subscribe thank you very much for your time happy taping bye bye